Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Thompson accomplished something new in photography. He set out to record a people, what these people were, how they live, and why they mattered. Everywhere, as Thompson photographed, he attempted to capture the individuality of each of his subjects, whatever their race or social class. John Thompson, pioneer of photojournalism. Continue watching to find out more. Continue with your war, cause hell is really honored to receive you and will give you the best place in the big hellfire. You stay in there forever. Cherished viewers, did you know that members of the Hmong ethnic group in Aulak, also known as Vietnam, speak a language that has no written form? To say hello in this special language, you say Nha Zhong. I'm Tao Thi Mei. The warm-hearted Hmong people send you their best wishes in your ongoing endeavor to become a better person. May heaven smile upon you. Welcome to our show, John Thompson, pioneer of photojournalism. John Thompson was a Scottish photographer, writer, geographer, and traveler. During his extensive travels to several Asian countries in the 19th century, he took many photographs which offered the West a glimpse of the culture and daily lives of ordinary people from the East. Despite being black and white in color, the beautiful sceneries and the people of diverse social statuses and backgrounds come alive through his lens to viewers even today. John Thompson was born in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1837 into a relatively humble family. At that time, the pursuit of science was flourishing and photography was in its infancy. Young John learned the principles of photography from a scientific instrument maker. He also attended classes at the Watt Institution and the School of Arts in Edinburgh, now known as Harriet Watt University. His fascination with the Far East started in 1861 when he first visited his brother William in Singapore. A year later, he returned to Singapore and opened his first photography studio. Before arriving in Singapore, Mr. Thompson spent 10 months on the Malaysian island of Penang, where he discovered his interest in traveling and photographing people and subjects in the towns and countryside. At that time, Photographing a person or a group of people was challenging due to the long exposure time of the photosensitive plates that required subjects to stay still for prolonged periods. Among the few of his early surviving photos stored in the Peranakan Museum of Singapore was a Peranakan lady dressed in a traditional sarong and kebaya. 
Peranakans were the offspring of unions between Chinese and Malayan people. In 1865, John Thompson moved to Siam, now known as Thailand. He was granted the opportunity of taking two portraits of His Majesty King Mongkut, the fourth monarch of Siam. In the first portrait, the king is dressed as a French field marshal wearing military attire in the manner of a Western monarch. The second portrait shows the monarch dressed in a traditional Thai ceremonial robe with headgear. King Mongkut is famous for hiring Miss Anna Leonowens. To teach his children, later Miss Leonowens wrote the memoir titled "The English Governess at the Siamese Court," which inspired the movie "The King and I." His Majesty King Mongkut allowed John Thompson to photograph the royal family and take portraits. Of senior figures in the Siamese court and government, he also allowed Mr. Thompson to travel to the interior of Cambodia. Once in the country, Mr. Thompson photographed His Majesty King Narodom, a royal and a statesman who was considered a progressive king for his time. He visited the ancient city of Angkor and spent two weeks documenting the archaeological site, becoming the first person to photograph this vast religious complex built in the 12th century. The site contains over a thousand buildings and is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. John Thompson was also fascinated by the lives of the local people, as shown in these photos of a young Siamese boy, a boatman, and a group of monks and novices. The people photographed by Mr. Thompson appear to be at ease and comfortable, which indicates that he most likely had a good way of interacting with his subjects and was sensitive to their lives and surroundings. The series of extraordinary images of Siam and Cambodia were released to the public when John Thompson returned home in Edinburgh for a short while in 1866, thus allowing the West to see pictures of Asian people and their way of life for the first time. In the meantime, he lectured widely and became a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society. Dear meat eaters, who gave you the right to eat your neighbors, the venerable Sivarama Swami, vegetarian. Broad-minded viewers, let's now pause for a moment to hear a brief message. We'll return shortly. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our show, featuring Scottish travel photographer John Thompson. In the fall of 1867, Mr. Thompson visited Aulak or Vietnam for three months, and photographed a series of magnificent scenes and human portraits. Later that same year, John Thompson moved to Hong Kong, then a vibrant economic center. During his four to five years of residence in the city, he made several trips to China, visiting many cities, including Canton, which is now known as Guangzhou, Fuzhou (now Fuzhou), Peking (now Beijing), and the Great Wall of China.
he also traveled to the island of Formosa, now also known as Taiwan. According to Mr. Thompson, his journey extended over a distance, estimated roughly of between 4,000 and 5,000 miles. Based on the study of Dr. Ellen Hockley, an associate professor of art history at Dartmouth College, USA, Mr. Thompson's photographs fall into two broad categories, scenic views and types. Views encompassed both natural landscapes and built environments. While types focused on the manners and customs of Chinese people and tended to highlight the defining features of gender, age, class, ethnicity, and occupation. John Thompson supplied pictures for the China magazine, China's first photographically illustrated periodical. His photos had depth and aesthetic quality showing his technical mastery of the camera. With his good business instinct, John Thompson managed to finance his own trips to different locations in China by selling pictures of various types, such as portraits on carte de visite, which were miniature photographic pictures of people mounted on carts. He also sold individual photographs of different shapes and formats, as well as albums. He accepted government commissions as well. For example, in 1869, he was commissioned to photograph His Royal Highness Prince Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh, during his visit to Hong Kong. Once satisfied with his China photo collection, Mr. Thompson returned to London in 1872, he had produced a series of 200 photographs distributed in four volumes titled Illustrations of China and its People, with narratives concerning each scene and subject he photographed. He compiled the first two volumes in 1873 and the remaining two in 1874. Today, thanks to online archives, like the historical photographs of China and the Welcome Collection. These photos are free for all to see. John Thompson shared the experience and knowledge he had acquired through his 10 years of traveling and photographing by writing about it. He contributed many articles to photographic journals, such as the British Journal of Photography. From 1876 to 1877, John Thompson worked with the journalist Adolf Smith on a series of illustrated articles based on interviews with men and women who worked on the streets of London. These included flower sellers, chimney sweepers, shoe blacks, chair caners, musicians, dustmen and locksmiths. Later they combined the photographs and articles in a book called Street Life in London. It was an early type of social documentary later known as photojournalism. In 1879, John Thompson was elected a member of the UK's Royal Photographic Society and became its principal photography teacher. He trained a new generation of photographers and in 1881, Her Majesty Queen Victoria appointed him the official photographer for the British royal family. John Thompson left a rich legacy after his passing in 1921. London's Wellcome Library bought his collection of over 600 glass plates documenting Asian landscapes, architecture, people, and customs of the 19th century. Recently, Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh exhibited John Thompson's China photographs to commemorate 100 years of his passing. The exhibition was named Through the Lens of John Thompson and lasted from September 2021 to March 2022. John Thompson's main achievement is perhaps best summarized by the words of Dr. Stephen White in his book John Thompson, A Window to the Orient, 
where he wrote, Thompson accomplished something new in photography. He set out to record a people, what these people were and how they lived and why they mattered. Everywhere, as Thompson photographed, he attempted to capture the individuality of each of his subjects. Whatever their race or social class, his work with peasants in Vietnam or Siam is just as meticulous as his work with kings or princes. In street life in London, as with beggars in Fu Chao, he clothed each individual in dignity. Don't be vegan, cause the intensive care unit is waiting for you. Compassionate viewers, thank you for your company today for John Thompson, pioneer of photojournalism. Up next is Getting Spot Fit with Coach Andrew Taylor, vegan, part one of two. May we appreciate and treasure the beauty of art from all cultures in the radiance of the heavenly light. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash AJAR. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique AJAR. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada a j a r Jangan kami menawarkan banyak bahasa. Sila kunjungi suprememastertv.com slash kehadapan schedule dan suprememastertv.com slash kehadapan EJAR.